Hi everybody, I'm Matt Watson. I'm the Global Chief Evangelist for NetApp. So I want to share some thoughts and perspectives around kind of where we've been, where we are and where we're going for the future and why I hope that, that, that much of what I say has a lot of relevance to you, regardless of kind of where you are in your journey at the moment. So when I think about, you know, where we came from, um, I joined NetApp in 2005 and I definitely joined in what I call the first wave, which was you know, we were very focused on storage, on NAS, filers. It was very much a, a, an infrastructure phase. And, uh, and our role was to bring out technologies that had good speed, good efficiencies, that help people consolidate um, and help bring efficiencies to their environments. And that wave doesn't go away. It's just that other waves start to hit us. And I think the second wave really was around flash and software defined and virtualization. And I think several interesting things came because of that wave. Um, the first one, with obviously the rise of virtualization, um, there were several things I remember. The first one was people saying this would be the end of companies like NetApp. Um, and actually, they were wrong. Because what happened with that second wave was the definition of data changed. Suddenly, data wasn't just what got created by an application or a user. Data is the application the application, the operating system, the virtual machine, and the data being created. And what's more, for virtual environments to work properly, you had to have shared storage. So I think what NetApp tried very hard to do, and I think we were, we were successful at it, was to show companies like yourselves how the data services, those features and capabilities that we had, that people knew us for, we could bring those to life up into these virtual environments to create new possibilities, new opportunities for the users and the application owners that were living in these new virtual worlds. And like I said, the second wave doesn't go away, but I believe we're seeing a third one that is increasing in, in its significance. And, and I think in this, this third wave, it really is about cloud in, in all of cloud's forms, whether it's you know private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid multi-cloud, because we do as vendors like to smash all these terms together. Um, and I think in this wave, the value of in data increases again. Um, and it's really what led to NetApp coming up with this idea of wanting to help companies build data fabrics. How could we start to bring the data services that we've always had but bring those to life across different endpoints, across different clouds, to start bringing the cloud to life in any one of these kind of different guises that we talk about. So there's a lot of trends that I think are, are affecting this and things that, that certainly we keep an eye on. If we look at sort of from a, an application architecture perspective, you know, we've had the, 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 the first platform, the second platform, and increasingly we're seeing obviously the rise of the third platform with Kubernetes and containers. Um, it wouldn't be a good IT presentation without me mentioning Kubernetes, would it? So uh, we got that one in early. But that shapes our thinking because it it's directly affects what it is that we need to do from a technology perspective and a partnership perspective going forward. We're seeing a change in the way that people consume, buy, run, manage infrastructures as we move towards you know, people wanting more of a platform as a service or an infrastructure as a service. And I think the one that's going to have the biggest impact here is going to be software as a service. It will become increasingly difficult for you to buy and install software because the companies that are developing this software, they don't want to sell it to you. They want to sell you a subscription to it. And that's going to become the predominant model as we go forward. New software companies coming into existence are going to want to sell you a subscription rather than actually sell you the software. So we need to think about what does that mean for us in, in terms of IT and as we t think about how we build out our IT environments. And then, of course, lastly, there's technology. And I, I'm a bit of a technology geek. It's why probably the reason I came into IT was because I loved the technology. Um, and this is moving at a pace that I've simply never witnessed before. Um, and, you know, if I boil this down to something that I'm very, very familiar with, let's boil it down to solid state drives just as a just to pick an example. Today, the largest solid state drive that NetApp ships is a 30 terabyte, so a 30 terabyte drive. Technically, it's actually a 30.6 terabyte drive, but we don't mention the 0.6 because frankly, it's a waste of words. If I take you back maybe five years ago, the largest one you could buy was a 400 gigabyte drive, which is smaller than the rounding error we don't even mention on the one we ship today. We have qualified the 61.2, we're not shipping it because it is 
eye-wateringly expensive, I think is the term I'm looking for. In the next year or so, we should get the 120, and within the next two to three years, we should get a quarter of a petabyte on something the size of your mobile phone. It's important because it means we need to think differently about how we procure. If you're procuring technology over a three to four, even a five year write down, when we're moving at this speed, after two, or maybe two years, your technology is starting to become out of date. After three years, it's probably starting to hold you back. And in years four or five, it's probably almost a liability. So it's gonna force us to think differently about how we procure technology. I think the other thing that will do is it will push people to the cloud. The easiest way not to worry about how do you keep up with this relentless pace of technological change is to make it somebody else's problem. And that in the cloud, it truly is somebody else's problem to give you or to keep you to a set of SLAs and you don't care what the underlying technology is. So we're very much aligning with what we see as the, the key market transitions and what we think are the big IT imperatives. We want to help companies get more from the cloud. You know, the cloud is fantastic. It can enable us to do some incredible things, but there are things that it doesn't do. And that's where we see there being a real opportunity for us. How do we take enterprise grade file services into the cloud? How do we take global file caching in? How do we take compliance in? How do we bring these capabilities that even if they do exist natively, are probably different across different cloud providers and bring them in a much more consistent fashion so you can get more from the cloud. And that includes efficiencies as well. How can we help you embrace the best of both worlds? And many of the conversations I'm having right now, companies are still making uh, <coughs> investments into on-premises technology, whether it's the last investment or whether it's uh, just you know, an ongoing investment that they'll make, I'm not so sure. But every conversation I have is very much predicated on, we've got to do something now but what we'd really like to do is start to think about how we could augment whatever we do with the capabilities of the cloud. And then I think it's about continuous optimization. How do we understand what we have, where we have it on premises across multiple different clouds and understand what does it look like? What decisions could we make? How can we optimize that for the future? How can we control costs, manage efficiencies? How do we get to do all of those things? And those three imperatives, those transitions and imperatives, really drive what we've been thinking of from a portfolio perspective. And it's these things that are really behind the data fabric strategy that we've been following since October 2014. So with the data fabric, which is not a net app thing, this is very much, we want to try and bring a data fabric to life for you. We believe in several core tenants. The first one is freedom of choice. The future is more unknown than it used to be, but we have to do something. So what we wanted to do and make sure we could do with the data fabric was give you the ability to do what you need to do today, but not lock you into a path that you can't deviate from in the future. If Amazon isn't part of your current plans, but it might be in the future, then we wanna make sure that our technology gives you that on-ramp. If it's Azure, if it's Google Cloud Platform, we also wanna try and make things simple bringing um, consistent data services, consistent encryption, consistent protection, you know, consistent set of these data services across on-premises and across different clouds as well. We spent the last 10 or 15 years breaking down the silos of technology and the complexities that were built into those silos. It would be awful if we got into a situation where the new silos are the new clouds, the new software as a service companies, and we start to have all of that complexity come back in again. And we wanna make sure that there's protection in place. And it's not just data protection, application protection, recovery, it's encryption, it's compliance. It's a much, much broader spectrum of how do we manage data and applications in an increasingly dispersed nature. So if you think about it from a workload perspective, these seven things tend to be the workloads that come up most frequently in conversations I'm having with companies right now. Um, and what we have to do as an organization, what we've been doing as an organization, is making sure that we have the right endpoints. Call them storage devices, call them endpoints, whatever you like. I'll call them endpoints because I want to bring the cloud into this. We want to have the right endpoints with the right characteristics that allow us to bring the best piece of technology to solve one of these workloads. If I think about enterprise applications, you know, it's all about extreme low latency, very, very high performance. And if you wanna do that on premises, then our all flash FAS is a great platform. 
If you then say, well, actually, what we'd like to do is operate in a more hybrid model, then bring online our Azure NetApp files or our Cloud Volumes on tap across Microsoft, Amazon, or Google. Now you've got a hybrid model where that hybrid, the cloud part of that can be used for test, development, disaster recovery, or even you can start to transition towards it to become cloud native when you want to. So we have a set of these different endpoints that means that we think that they can address the right characteristics for the workloads, but you have a choice of how you want to deploy. Do you want to be on-premises today, hybrid tomorrow, and fully cloud in the future? And do you want to do that at your own pace? That's what we've really been focused on. And it's the same for all of these different workloads that we're talking about here. And what we've been building over the top of it is a set of data services, a powerful set of data services that we think add even more value to this. We can, through our Cloud Insights, discover your on-premises technology, heterogeneously discover your on-premises technology. We can discover what you're running in the Cloud, Amazon, Microsoft, Google. We can give you a view as to what your entire on-premises, hybrid, hybrid multi-cloud environment actually looks like so that you can make better decisions about optimizing it, about running it, about finding out if there's problems, about being able to, to make decisions about what you want to do going forward. We can make recommendations to help you optimize it. If we've discovered volumes and we find that there's a volume with 500 terabytes of data on it and you haven't accessed half of that for six months, we can flag that dynamically as an opportunity for optimization. And using our fabric pool capability, we could automatically tier that onto some lower cost form of storage. We can integrate and connect using our cloud manager. We can, it's literally drag and drop. We can take a volume from an on-premises array to a volume in the cloud. We drag and drop the two together, the replication starts. So it's very, very easy to start connecting on-premises into the cloud. We can discover remote locations and through drag and drop have that remote data coming back to the core so that it's protected or so that we can get that in front of the teams who might be doing advanced analytics or AI take capabilities. And we can adapt and protect. From an adapt perspective, a lot more focused on the cloud with Spot and our cloud volumes, we're now able to align the appropriate compute and storage resources to the workload as that workload evolves and changes, which means that as the workload requirements start to drop, we can shape the size of the volume down, we can adjust the compute characteristics, ensuring you're getting as much cloud as you can get for the lowest possible cost. And from a protection perspective, yes, data protection, application protection is key to what we've done. It always has been, always will be. But now with a consistent set of endpoints, you can have consistent encryption. You can have compliance. What if somebody copied data from on-premises to the cloud? Well, the first thing we can do is tell you that happened because we can look at user behavior. If that was something that concerned you, either on automatically or on demand, we can allow you to run a compliance check on the cloud volume and tell you whether there is anything in that data, whether that is file-based data, SAP data, SAP HANA, SQL, Oracle, any data inside those schemas or files that could expose you to some sort of regulatory or compliance breach. And all these capabilities exist right now. And what we want to try and do for you is to bring the right ones, the right pieces together such that we can solve whichever workload it is that you're trying to solve, whether that's on-premises, whether that's hybrid, or whether that's in a cloud-native format. And it's obviously about management. We've got different ways of managing this. Our cloud manager is a very, very simple tool for doing kind of volume management, connecting volumes together, running compliance checks. But we have a full suite of APIs. Everything we do is driven by an API and a full set of Ansible modules, such that if you're using a, a higher level kind of orchestration framework, such as ServiceNow, it's very, very easy to tap into these capabilities and bring your data fabric to life through your ServiceNow or your orchestration framework that you're using. So I really appreciate you giving me the time to speak to you all today. Um, I hope that this has given you some food for thought, and I'm gonna leave you with this one final thought before you go into the rest of the next sessions, which is, we would love to work with you and work out how we could help you to build your data fabric. Thank you very much for your time.